Um, without any further ado, we will jump over to Nick Shaw. So take it away, Nick. All right. So yeah, a little bit about me. Um, so I'm a, a high school teacher. Um, I'm very interested in all this kind of stuff in Unibranks, marine life, uh, and also uh, life on the land, I guess, as well. Uh, I thought today, I, I do do diving as well, but primarily I do snorkeling. So I thought I'd try and focus on how to sort of increase your success in rock pools. So for me, <clears throat> uh, the southern areas are much better. So anywhere sort of down here, uh, some of the better places would be my sort of theory is wherever there's sort of currents dragging. I always sort of think of rock pools as almost like a graveyard for the nudibranchs. So like where, where are the nudibranchs getting washed into or where are they sort of getting dragged away by the current? So like obviously down near the entrance, there's a lot of currents down there. Um, so any nudibranchs that have been dislodged from their home they could possibly be dragged and then washed into a, a rock pool or a reefy area down the bottom. So that's why Point Lonsdale, in my opinion, is really good and it changes all the time what's there. So the entrance is very close. There's some rock pools here. I haven't actually been out to this out a bit. It's pretty scary to get across this thing here. The current really gets through there. There's some reef down here near the pier as well. And there's some big rock pools actually on this um, outer reef. I've checked out the reef over here as well. That's not bad, but I've only seen the, uh, what is it? The Earth Colonia one. It's like the black with the orange little dots on the back of it. I really would like to check out down here. It's very hard, obviously, to get to. You'd have to walk about 45 minutes through the quarantine station to get down there. Some other places that have been good. I've read a lot about San Remo being really good. I've, I've gone snorkeling there three times and almost got dragged out to the to Bash Strait. The currents there are so nuts. Um, there's, I've tried down here as well. Again, I was thinking with the same sort of theory, currents from Western Port, what are they sort of done a dump down here into the reefs down here? I, so last census I tried down here, it was pretty good. Um, I've read down here is pretty good, but I've only tried on the mushroom reef side. The time I went there, it wasn't the best weather though. So I can't really say it wasn't the best, but in general, Sticking down the south way more. I've gone snorkeling at the top a lot, but to be honest, the only one I've found there is the big, uh, forgive my pronunciation, a lot of these things I've just read in books, uh, Cerastoma brevi cordatum, whatever it is. That really big one looks like a chorizo. Uh, obviously, one sort of spot I'm starting to go to more now is Sorrento Back Beach. So there's the big car park there. There's a really sort of big, deep, rock pool here and then there's another huge one here which you could spend hours and hours in trying to find them it's almost too big there's some down here i'd really like to try out as well but obviously the best time to go is low tide because uh that's when i do again it's just is my theory so when the waves have washed all the nudibranchs into here then they've sort of settled down um, and then you can have a look through the kelp for them uh so back when i started similar to ian when i started out i actually Took me a long time to see my first one. I think my first one was the clown nudibranch one. Um, and then for the, like the next sort of six months or so, I could only find the big ones. And when I first saw my first small ones, about the size of a thumbnail, I finally went, holy moly, is that how big they are? And so that's what really started to get my eye in. Back when I started as well, I used to not wear a wetsuit. So I would only go in hot weather. Um, so to me, like a blue sky, a sunny day perfect place would be to go to something like this. So that's, this is Sorrento Back Beach. Um, so there's a big pool there, big pool there. But this gets my next sort of point with rock pools. It's better, rock pools would be really harsh. So when, at least when you're diving, the sunlight and things are not as harsh. And you can tell that when you're down because the colors are different. But in rock pools, they're really exposed. So I always, always think, think like a garden snail. If it's good garden snail weather, it should be good for um, sea slugs. So I've gone snorkeling quite a lot at night lately, mainly because I've got young kids and stuff. So it's hard for me to get out, but I actually find it kind of relaxing. Um, so night, it's a bit crazy, but yeah, it's definitely doable. But conditions like this, like a foggy sort of calm morning. So you can see this reef here at Point Lonsdale. So if you have a look around here, you should be able to find some things. But this sort of conditions, like you can picture slugs and things coming out in your garden. 
So if that's the case, it'll be easy to find. They'll be on the, more likely be on the top side of kelp. Um, so this is one I found a couple of cents ago. A little, again, never actually said this out loud. Genulus, 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 whatever. Um, found this guy on some kelp. I was trying to take a photo with a light. And as I shine my light, I started to get cranky with me and then just sort of dove off the edge of the kelp. So these things, in my experience, nearly all of them really hate sunlight or in this case, a torch. So dawn and dusk have been really good. Dawn's nice because you can sort of get there and then it sort of gets gradually lighter. Uh, it's just in, when you're in the rock pool itself, some are much easier to find. So some of the ones, the aeolid ones, they kind of move around a bit faster. So the ones with the little sort of, what are they called again? Serrata on their back. Um, so they move around faster. So they, they're more likely to be on the top of the kelp and the bottom because they move around so much. Little polycera like this, sometimes they'll just hang out on the edge of, um, of the kelp. So either, I'm, I don't know what they're doing, maybe they're sensing with their rhinopores or their, I don't know, I don't, actually don't know what these things eat. So maybe they're eating, I don't know. Um, but like sometimes, some days it is a bad day. So like a bad day for me in a rock pool would be maybe one in an hour or even none. But like when it's a good day, but basically when you get in there, there's so many in that rock pool that you should find one within five minutes. And then once you go in, sometimes there's just so many in there and you find them every few minutes. And that could be different species or the same one. Okay. Oh yeah. And you're sort of looking for what not, what does not belong. With, um, if it's nice weather, like Ian's saying, like if they've been washed into the rock pool and it's a sunny day, they're more likely to crawl around to the bottom of the kelp. So you might have to lift the kelp and see if there's anything under there. So this is one that like a, a little, uh, what is it, Doris Cameroni. So that was on the underside of the kelp. And then as soon as I saw it on the other side, it started crawling straight away to get back um, away from the sun. Uh, and there's a little, oh, I forget that one. It's got to change his name, C. Poenica or something. Um, that one you can see is sort of, once it's been exposed to the sun, it starts to sort of get right back down into there. Some of them tiny. So this, you can see this rock pool I was in, it had some waves crashing into it. That's why there's all these little sand and stuff everywhere in the water. That's a little dodo ostenta. So they're tiny things. So, so that's my thumb. So you can see how small it is. Um, and so with kelp like this, generally because it's rough, there's not much stuff on it. So if there is something on it, it's more likely it could be something interesting. So it could be a nudibranch or a sea spot or um, one of those little crustacean things that you can see there. Um, so like sometimes I, they're too small and you can't actually tell what they are. So I just tend to take photos of anything I think is a sea slug. Sometimes I'll zoom my camera and try and find out if it is. So if you look at these three, see if you can have a guess which ones are nudibranchs, which ones are not. Let me give you five seconds. So I tried to zoom in a bit. It's a little coralline algae. Uh, that's a middle one nudibranch. And I think that was just a little bit of fish poo. But from a distance, that looks really like a nudibranch. It's got this nice curve to it, kind of getting sort of like a nudibranch shape. So it could be exciting if you see that from a couple of meters away, but when you get closer, you're like, ah, fuck okay. it. It's not a nudibranch. And that's quite interesting, this one, how it's trying to maybe through natural selection, similar shape. So my general su summary for rock pools, low, low tide obviously is the best because then you can get the pools that are, have had nudibranchs and other creatures washed into them. Um, down the southern part of the bay, southern part of Western Port are the best, or even on the um, Bass Strait side as well. Uh, I think dusk and dawn are probably the best. Night is a little bit crazy. Gloomy weather is really good. So like a day like today would have been amazing. Um, if it's a nice sunny day, you might have to get the kelp and sort of have a look under it. Sometimes it's a bad day, so you've got to persist a bit. Um, and then as you've been doing it more and more, you get your eye and you start finding um, more and more interesting ones. So that's it for me. All right, thank Nick. thanks Nick. Um, and yeah, look, I think someone's mentioned um, we should all take a Latin course. Uh, look, you know, yeah, I think no. most <laughs> most of us here, um, yeah, we're seeing these names in books, and it, you know, it's just about having having a good old crack. Well, at you it. I think one. you did well. Oh, I would have said Janalis. Janalis. 
but I guess Steve can tell us whether we're wrong later. Um, all right. No <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs>